Is the fear of public speaking on par with that for you? Then you should check this video. You should always incorporate three important concepts into your speech. Now let's start with the first one. Your speech has to be emotional. Unleash the master within. If you are not excited about the thing, you cannot make people excited about it. You cannot inspire people while you are already bored. Find the topic that you have passion for. Passion is contagious. Inspire people with your enthusiasm. Don't be afraid of expressing yourself. People love meaningful and sincere connections. Research shows that perceived passion increases the likelihood of acceptance for the offer. Have you heard about neuroplasticity? The brain actually grows and changes throughout life. Intense repetition of a task creates new, stronger neural pathways. That's why stop worrying about speaking in public. Being a decent speaker is easier than you think. The more you speak in the public, the more the language area of the brain will become developed. Master the art of storytelling. Most people fill their presentations with facts and numbers. All of these might seem necessary, but it's not a good way to reach the audience. You should tell stories to reach people's hearts and minds. This guy is Brian Stevenson. He is the speaker who earned the longest standing ovation in TED history. What's his secret? He spends 65% of his presentation telling stories. Stories stimulate and engage the human brain. They help the speaker to connect with the audience. They make it much more likely that the audience will agree with the speaker's point of view. This guy is Aristotle. He is pretty good with the theories. He believed that persuasion covers three components. First is ethos, which corresponds to credibility. Second is logos, which corresponds to logic, evidence, data. Third is pathos, which is the act of appealing to emotions. Now analyze your speech. How does your pathos stack up against the rest? If your emotional appeal is minimal, immediately start adding these. Personal stories that are relevant, stories of other relevant people, stories of the relevant things like products or brands. Have a conversation. Practice relentlessly, I mean seriously. Internalize your content. So much that you can deliver your presentation like a casual conversation. Match the pace of your verbal delivery with your natural conversation style. Own the knowledge and make everybody know that. Use gestures. Gestures actually give the audience confidence in the speaker. Don't be afraid to use your hands. Use them at key points whenever it feels natural. Don't try to imitate the gestures of others. Just be yourself. Let your story guide your moves, don't overthink about them. Amy Cuddy is a social psychologist at the Harvard Business School. Cuddy believes body language shapes who we are. She says that how we use our bodies can change people's perceptions of us. Even if you don't feel confident, act like it and your chances of success will greatly improve. Don't fake it till you make it, fake it till you become it. Amy Cuddy Secondly, your speech should be novel. Teach me something new. The human brain loves novelty and it hates generic boring stuff. Try to give the audience a new way of looking at the world. Yes, it requires some creativity, but you can do it. Experience new events, people and places. Incorporate those new experiences into your presentations. Seth Godin is a marketing genius. He has a book titled Purple Call. Why? Because brown calls are boring. Put a little different spin on your content. Give it a hook and your listeners will be far more receptive to your message. If you can't explain your big idea in 140 characters or less, keep working on your message. The discipline brings clarity to your presentation. It helps your audience recall the one big idea you are trying to teach them. Reveal information that's completely new to the audience. Or at least package the information differently. Try to offer a fresh and novel way to solve an old problem. Unleash your creativity to present your ideas. Deliver jaw-dropping moments. Try to deliver shocking moments to the audience. Persuasion occurs when you reach a person's heart and head. You will need evidence, data and statistics to back up your argument. Make numbers meaningful, memorable and jaw-dropping by placing in a context that the audience can relate. A statistic doesn't have to be boring. Does your presentation have data that is groundbreaking? Think about how you might package it and make it appealing to the listener. Every presentation needs one. Get one and use it. Plan the story first. Just as a movie director storyboards the scenes before beginning shooting, create the story beforehand. You will have plenty of time to design pre-decides once the story is complete. 
But if this story is boring, you will lose your audience before you speak a word. Lighten up. The brain loves humor. Give your audience something to smile about. Stop taking yourself too seriously. Humor lowers defenses, making your audience more receptive to your message. It also makes you seem more likable, and people are more willing to do business with someone they like. Dating sites show that the most desirable trait in a mate is sense of humor. A crushing majority of 80% give this answer. Similarly, your audience is turned on by humor. Arouse them. Their devotion will help you to be far more successful. Think back to stories and observations that have made you or your colleagues smile in the past. If they worked there, wave them into your narrative and practice telling it. You don't have to be a comedian. If needed, just call somebody else who said something funny. It can be from famous people, anonymous people, or family and friends. TED speakers do this all the time. You can also incorporate a humorous photograph or video clip to lighten the mood. Humor involves some risk and most people don't have the courage for it. This is why most presentations are awfully dry and boring. It takes courage to be vulnerable, to poke some good nature fun at yourself and your topic. The key is to be authentic. Don't try to be someone you are not. But if something makes you laugh, there's a good chance it will make someone else laugh too. Finally, your presentation has to be memorable. Stick to the 18 minute rule. If you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. Albert Einstein Researchers have discovered that too much information prevents the successful transmission of ideas. The longer the presentation, the more the listener has to organize, comprehend and remember. The burden increases along with the listener's anxiety. They become increasingly frustrated, even angry. Be sophisticated. Keep your presentations and pitches short and simple. 18 minutes is the ideal length of time for a presentation. If you must create one that's longer, build in soft breaks every 10 minutes. Many effective TED presenters use three stories as the outline for their presentations. Step 1. Create a Twitter-friendly headline. Step 2. Support the headline with three key messages. Step 3. Reinforce three messages with stories, statistics and examples. Paint a mental picture with multisensory experiences. Remember, the brain does not pay attention to boring things. It's nearly impossible to be bored if you are exposed to mesmerizing images, captivating videos. Visuals matter a lot. In our brain, pictures are processed in several channels instead of one. That gives the brain a far deeper and meaningful encoding experience. Evidence shows that the concepts presented as pictures instead of words are more likely to be recalled. If you hear information, you are likely to remember about 10% of that information 3 days later. Add a picture to that and your recall rate will soar to 60%. Simply, pictures will help you remember 6 times more information than listening to the words alone. People will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Maya Angelou Don't think just about what you want people to know. Think about how you want them to feel. Once you force yourself to eliminate wordy slides, you will realize how much more fun you can have. Step outside the slides every once in a while. Build in demonstrations, show products, ask the audience to participate. Stay in your lane. Most people can spot a phony. If you try to be someone that you are not, you will fail to gain the trust of your audience. Present your content to a friend or spouse before you have to present it to the intended audience. My mind went blank when I took the microphone. I mumbled incoherently for a bit before leaving the podium. It was one of the most embarrassing moments of my life and my face glowed red as the Virgin logo. Richard Branson Branson committed himself to becoming a better speaker. He practiced relentlessly. Billionaire investor Warren Buffett was also terrified of public speaking. He was so nervous that he would arrange his college classes to avoid having to get up in front of people. He even enrolled in a public speaking course but dropped out before even it started. At the age of 21, Buffett started his career and decided that he had to overcome his fear. He enrolled in a Dale Carnegie course with other people who were terrified of getting up and saying names. You have got to be able to communicate in life and it's enormously important. Schools, to some extent, underemphasize that. If you can't communicate and talk to other people and get across your ideas, you are giving up your potential. Warren Buffett